Jeff, thanks for joining us on our, uh, you know, our interview series, A Passion for Change. Uh, you've written a really influential book that, that a lot of uh, our customers have been talking about and is getting a lot of uh, publicity and it's part of the zeitgeist now. So we've got to uh, be great to, to have you on as a guest and do our very first sort of video interview. I very much appreciate the invite. Thank you so much. So what do you see as the, the largest opportunity today for a digital solution uh, uh, to make an impact? The, uh, the, the solution which offers the greatest um, uh, potential today uh, by far um, is the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the reason I say that is because the oil and gas industry is blessed with enormous deposits of, uh, of data assets, which has accumulated over the years and continues to accumulate. Uh, and much of this data, unfortunately, sits in, uh, in, in places where the industry has either forgotten it exists or doesn't understand its value or dismisses it out of hand as being dirty data. And, uh, and, and I believe that the, the fastest way to value in the world of digital isn't necessarily to generate more data. Well, that's very easy to do. It is how do you harvest the data assets that you've already got. But if you wanted a, you know, a, a, a shot that you could pull today, that would yield an outcome, it would be to apply artificial intelligence or machine learning somewhere in, in the business. So, uh, I mean, where, where do you see folks on this transition from uh, managing their own IT systems versus, you know, finding uh, uh, service providers in the cloud? Um, you know, what, what's the industry doing uh, to manage these huge volumes? Well, the first uh, challenge the industry has to come to grips with is the, as you, as you point out, is the, the enormous growth in the volume of data out there. And so there's the first problem. How do you get your arms around all of this data? And who can afford, if you're an oil company as an example, can you afford to be having to stand up your own incremental infrastructure year on year on year just to store all of this data? And uh, that it brings with it all kinds of other interesting questions. Where do you locate your data center? Uh, how do you handle backups and recoveries? Uh, how do you build in your redundancies? What about your, uh, your redundant power supplies? How are you going to fuel this? Like there's so much energy goes into running a data center. And the leading oil and gas companies have concluded that the right answer now is to shift off of trying to do this, uh, roll your own infrastructure and to leverage the capabilities afforded by uh, the large cloud computing companies. Out of your proprietary data center into your, onto these, this cloud infrastructure, that in turn opens up all the new business model possibilities that we've seen from all of the other industries that have, had, that have gone ahead of oil and gas. That's step one. Step two though, has to be investing in the talent and the capability to be able to take the data that you're, you're sitting on and make sense of it. And that's where the, the need to uh, bring on board data scientists and other data specializations so that you can uh, begin to extract that, that value promise from all of that data. So there was a really great phrase in the, in the book that I learned. I hadn't heard this one before, Jeff, but wetware. Can you tell me what wetware is? <laughs> hardware? Yeah, well, if software is what's on your computer and uh, hardware is, is this sort of thing, right? That's, that's your hardware device. Then uh, wetware is you and I. <laughs> we are, we are a co our own sort of, co of computer capacities just up here. And so wetware refers to the, uh, the, the uh, humans that have to, uh, that are working with, uh, with both hardware and software. And, and for the time being, we are, we're gonna be in a wetware world. <laughs> we, have, we are gonna have lots of people managing and administering our facilities and our assets. Well, uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, humans just weren't designed, it, you know, it would, the wetware is not capable of, of digesting, ingesting, contextualizing these incredible volumes of data that we're now privy to. Yeah, quite right. I mean, as humans, we, we, we learn at a certain pace. And uh, the, this is a, so we are at a significant disadvantage when you think about the pace of digital change and how fast um, machines are able to learn. It feels like there's some top-down initiatives at the, at the board level to, um, you know, undertake some of these transformation initiatives. But when the rubber meets the road inside the company, you know, it's one thing to have a memo come down from the board. Um, but what, what have been the, the successful uh, strategies that companies have undertaken to, to, to actually take a tangible first step, you know, after that memo comes down? A short and quick path 
forward that most companies take is that they'll create some kind of digital task force or innovation council or a digital center of excellence somewhere in their in their organization and then and, and they'll say that's your job uh, to kind of move forward and this can work uh, it needs four what I call four essential ingredients for success uh, one is uh, needs an organization it needs to have resources so it can actually do things so by that I mean money and budget to spend and so forth number three it needs to have ways of working and then fourth um, that uh, capability that team needs to have real hard measures of success uh, if you don't have those four ingredients your task force your council your innovation center of excellence it's it's not going to be successful second ingredient you have to have in place is it's got to be implemented in a business unit and so to to get to success the business unit itself has to be ready to embrace this digital change and that means changing the performance metrics for the manager in that unit uh, then you need to train the workforce in that unit so that they know that what's coming at them is actually a expectation of the company that if they don't embrace these changes and drive change then then the whole unit will will suffer but you actually make a really interesting argument uh, about you know what competes for capital in an up market versus what can, competes for capital in a down market I'd love to hear you know, your specific thoughts about that uh, so, you know, we have some real challenges in, uh, in, in the context of uh, how to drive uh, the, uh, this uh, sort of change agenda forward. Uh, so, uh, in, in, you can go from uh, see midstream companies with a viable digital game plans underway today, upstream companies, um, refineries, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, the digital agenda should continue to run regardless of what, what the, where we're at in the cycle. So, you know, another thing that I was really interested in was thinking about uh, sort of IT and OT and, and their role. If you just walk us through how, how IT, you know, and, and how they end up managing these projects and then, you know, what OT really is and, and what their role is through the process. Oh, sure. So IT is uh, the part of the most uh, commercial businesses will have an a information technology department. And in there, you'll find um, the team that makes sure the email system works correctly, uh, that the ERP systems are supported properly, uh, that the uh, infrastructure is in place to do things like Zoom calls, that, that lets you bring your tablet to work, gives you your single sign-on. All that sort of stuff is in that world of IT. And it, its specialization is integrating all of these multiple technologies together and making them appear seamless. That's one of their secret sauces. Uh, so IT is generally very, very good at this patching, keeping complexity going, and securing and providing a whole range of service and having a help desk and responding to, to employees' needs. OT is what we call operational technology. OT is what you find in a plant. It runs 24-7. It never shuts down. It's responsible for keeping physical infrastructure running within certain set points. It goes by the name of SCADA, which stands for Supervisory uh, Control and Data Acquisition. You're supervising an asset and you're capturing the data from that asset as it's running. In historically, these have been two separate solitudes. The problem though, is that in a digital world, they start to come together. Um, if you look at the oil and gas industries from one end to the other, upstream, midstream, downstream, retailing, trading, even capital projects, you'll find slight and distinct differences all the way along the chain as to how people think about and approach the world of IT, their world of operations technology, and now their world of digital technology. There isn't a, there's no clear, clean cut answer emerging yet. Well, this has been really fantastic, Jeff. I really appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity to visit with you. Uh, and so what I wanted to show the group here was, uh, we've got our own copy of, of Bits, Bytes and Barrels here. And then uh, Jeff was kind enough to, to help us print uh, uh, our, our own logo here. So if this is something that, that you're interested in, uh, you know, follow us on LinkedIn, uh, join our, our Petro AI community, and uh, you know, we'll give you an opportunity to, uh, to get a copy of Jeff's book, and, and we'd, we'd love to share this with you. Um, but before we sign off, Jeff, is there anything else that you'd, you'd uh, any wisdom you'd want to share with us as, as parting words here? Not one thing, but three things. Sure. So first sure. is, uh, I write a weekly article series about digital innovation in oil and gas, which is available on my website. And uh, it's absolutely free. 
Uh, companion to that is a podcast that I also publish uh, every week on iTunes and Stitcher and Spotify and all the places where you find podcasts. It's called Digital Oil and Gas. Um, and third, um, a company, um, a government agency actually uh, asked me if I would turn my book into a training course. And um, so I did that for them. And then uh, since I built all the materials, I then recorded all the materials as a series of online lectures. And they're available on Udemy for about the same price as, as the book itself. Uh, so thanks so much for, for taking the time. You bet. I'm delighted to do it and uh, look forward to doing this uh, sometime in the future again. Take care.